first of the Plains Indian men would actually take that exact same gun and take a file or a hacksaw, which they could both, they could buy either one of those items at the trading post, and file the barrel off. Then they might make several things out of those barrel pieces. They might make a flute, like they can take the metal tube and, and drilling holes in it. They could also buy drills and brace and bit drills at the trading post. Or they might make a quirt handle, like we were showing some of the horse whips. Well, they liked making them out of a gun barrel because it was very heavy, which means they could use that as a club as well. They would also a lot of times take off the metal butt plate that was on the end here because to them that was like a wasted piece of metal. And metal was so valuable, they were like, so what's the deal with the piece of metal on the end? I can make something much better out of that piece of metal, and a gun doesn't need that. So they would take that off and turn that into a hide flesher or a scraper or even cut arrowheads out of it sometimes. So you wanted it really short like this so you could use it on horseback, see, and you could use it much easier than that long gun just by using it as a big pistol or a big solid off shotgun. Then a typical Plains Indian, when he was actually going to load this, like I just showed you how to load that one, what they wanted to do is be able to do it on a horse very rapidly. So the hardest part is to take this out, like I was showing you that ramrod, ram it in there while you're running around on a horse and people are shooting at you and you're dodging prairie dog holes and other horses and things in the ground and people shooting bows and arrows and stuff at you. Then the harder part of that is to put that back in there where it belongs. So what they wanted to do was totally eliminate this step right here. So they would take their gunpowder and just pour it into the barrel. And the, the, the horn that kept your gunpowder was made small enough where when you pull the cap off to hold it in, it fits right into the barrel. See, it fits right in there. If that didn't fit in there and you were running on a horse, you could never pour powder in there because the powder would be just flying all over the place. So this way you put it right in there, shake it, and then the gunpowder goes in. Now, a typical white man from back then would have actually measured his powder power, probably. If he was going to shoot a ground, uh, a ground squirrel, he might only put 30 grains of powder. If he's going to shoot a buffalo bull, he might put 110 grains of powder. If he's going to shoot just a man, he might only put 60 to 80 grains of powder because the more gunpowder you put in there, of course, the more powerful it is. But an Indian just wanted to load it and load it fast. So they just poured the powder in there, however much they thought was correct. Then instead of taking this out, which was the hard part, and pushing the bullet down in the barrel, they would actually keep the lead bullets in their mouth, which gave them lead poisoning in turn, and they would make it smaller than the barrel. So instead of having to force it down the barrel with this rod, they just spit it into the barrel just like that. Then also on a horse, when you're running around on horseback in your battles, you have to open this little pan up, pour gunpowder in there, and then close it back down is not only hard, it's almost impossible. Because as soon as you open that and try to pour gunpowder in it and you're going 30 miles an hour on a horse, all that powder just blows away like that. So what they do is they'd, they'd take a drill and they'd drill out that hole that goes from the inside of the barrel to that pan so it was like a much, much larger. Then they would just keep this closed. Then once they had gunpowder in the barrel, they'd just shake it like that and that would throw the gunpowder into this pan. So now they've eliminated two, three steps. One, taking this out, Two, ramming that in, three, ramming it back down, putting this back into position. So it's actually four steps because now they don't have to put powder in here either. So the problem with doing all that is now you have to hold your gun straight up in the air because the bullet is just sitting down in here on top of the gunpowder. It's not tight inside the barrel at all. If you do like that, the gunpowder and the bullet will all run out the barrel seam. Another disadvantage of that is the whole concept of any gun, even a modern gun, and with the modern bullets and all, is when the gunpowder explodes, it turns into a very rapidly expanding gas that has to get out of there somehow. And that's what it's doing by pushing the bullet out of the way. That's all the gunpowder is doing, is getting the bullet out of the way so it can come out of the barrel like that. When your bullet is very loose in there, like an Indian would do it, <clears throat> it does several things. It makes it not as powerful because it's the compression building up behind it that makes the power, which it fits really tight. But when your bullet's loose and it's going out of the barrel and there's lots of gas escaping around it, instead of a loud cracking noise and a very powerful bullet, it's more of a whoosh. And the bullet and the gas is escaping all around the bullet as the bullet's going out too, so there's not near as much compression. Also, the, the whole theory behind even a modern gun is the straighter the barrel and the tighter the bullet fits, the straighter that bullet is going to continue to go when it exits the barrel. But now, since your bullet is smaller than your barrel, it's just bouncing its way outside of that barrel. It's literally going out of the barrel, like ding, 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 bouncing all the way out of there. And of course, it's very fast, like any bullet, but all of that is still affecting the, the, is affecting the overall performance of the bullet when it leaves the barrel. So it'll just go whichever direction that last ding goes. So a lot of times, they would just use buckshot, like a big shotgun in these. And there again, they'd have a whole mouthful of buckshot. 
they just fit a bunch of them in there and do it down like that. But a gun like this, it's only accurate for like 20 or 30 yards, but that's all they wanted it to be because they weren't going to shoot anybody at far away anyway. And several Indian accounts I've read from the old days said that the reason they wanted to shoot people up close is because they wanted to see that look on your face when they knew that you knew that you they were going to get you. That was what they wanted to see. There's no fun to shoot anybody three or four hundred yards away. You don't get to see that look on their face. They <laughs>